or I am in Woodsit, North Carolina. I'm a traveler by the name of Wolf. So that car is coming, so I gotta get out the way. Alright, go up there. There's something. So here's the deal with me. I'm a traveler of over 16 years. I'm an avatar. And I've dedicated my life to balance and peace. But don't get me wrong, I go to war sometimes. But I'm always ready for it. I never search it out. Let me come up here. These cars are going to be loud as hell. You ready, Lulu? All right, this way. All right, so here's the deal. This has made a particularly different change in my life. I've been working this job for about two, maybe three months. In exchange for that job, I had to give up pieces of my soul each day. Uh, we're going to stop for a second. I had a worker. I was, I was a great worker. I was fast and efficient and strong. I was working in a food service industry, a place called Del Monte. And I was strong, I was fast, I was quick. I was able to do things, I was smart. I wasn't asking for a promotion, but I was given three. And I put it in my fucking best. I put in 115, 120% every day. Until the work pl workplace bullying started. <laughs> And then it started eating away at my uh, at my anxiety and my patience. Yeah, I had people sabotaging me. We uh, they'll hide things from me, get me to do their work because I'm just I'm I'm just trying to keep the job. I'm not really looking to like deny anything if somebody asks me, "Hey, can you do this?" But yeah, they were they were throwing six jobs at me at once. I was pulling them off. That's the thing. I was pulling off the jobs. But I come to find out that those jobs weren't jobs that I was supposed to be doing. It was supposed to be for the other people. And the, lo and behold, while I'm sitting here doing these jobs and just then third, for to stop and find them people. Let's just say I had to go go to somewhere else and go find, so go to another department and find something. I find the workers sitting there chatting and uh, socializing amongst themselves. while they're telling me that the work that they asked me to do was something that they weren't able to handle because they didn't have enough time, they were doing other things. I find them sitting there flirting and socializing with their um, supervisors and all types of stuff for over 20 minutes. I keep a watch on me, so it's not like I couldn't keep track of the time. But it was just hell. I was working over 60 hours a week, working Monday through Friday. I took a day off work. <laughs> As I just told them, I was like, I can't come in today. And they told me, uh, they, they were like, okay, cool. And then I come in the day afterwards, and then I had one of the other uh, Hispanic uh, workers talk to another worker and tell him, hey, if any one of us did that, because it's majority Hispanic workers, told me if any, any one of us did that, we'd be fired. I bet you the only reason why he's got this job is because he's black. So that happened. Me either or in the meantime, while I'm sitting here working out of the woods in order to make up enough money to get a vehicle. I got my dog sitting here in the woods waiting for me 10 hours a day until I get back. She's ran away three times. And that job isn't worth my baby. I have... I had multiple dreams. I had a dream that I got set up by my friends at my job 
by the police and I wound up getting shot by the police and when I did I woke up. I had another dream after that that I was trying to be I was being robbed by some people and who just so happened to uh, to be very familiar to the people that I work with and I wound up shooting one of them. There was two two of them doing it, but uh, I wound up shooting the person that was uh, robbing me. The third job I had last night, I was um, in some type of, uh, I was talking to my managers and telling them about the situation and this and the third and they could act like they could give a fuck. And I just feel like God's giving me signs to leave this job. So I did. I just walked out. I didn't clock in today. I just did my own thing. Fuck it. I keep telling, I keep, you keep telling me over and over again to start a YouTube channel. So I'm thinking that'd be the best option because I've already had one now. It's just kind of shitty because I haven't really been putting in, I've been putting in like 20% effort just to try to see what it'd be like. So now I'm going to try to necessarily 100%, but I'm going to put in effort in order to be a little bit more, uh, work harder on the social media aspect of it, I guess. So yeah, I walked out of my fucking job. I said, fuck them. This, that toxic, narcissistic environment is not worth my peace of mind. And yeah, they may be the, the millennial Iro speaking in me, but yeah, it wasn't worth my peace of mind. It wasn't worth my baby. And I'm coming back from work and she's got 10 or 15 ticks on her. I'm gonna have to pluck those off every night, stressing out about that, and then have to wake up and deal with the shit that's coming from all these other people. It's like, if there were to be like 30 people I work with, it's about 10 people. It, it even gets so bad as there are certain workers that when no one's around, they'll like give me a fist bump or say what's up to me or whatever. But when the people that are doing the bullying are around, they'll act like they don't know me, act like they don't want to say anything to me. I've had about seven workers ask me where I live. And even though this may not seem like that big of an issue, but they, I've had three workers offer to drive me home. It's just, I don't know, something about being a mystery to people makes them so curious. And I wasn't trying to be, I just keep my shit to myself. It's my business, I don't ask about their business. But anyways, yeah. Uh, so right now I'm walking my ass up the, up the road. I quit my job, so I'm just gonna find another one or just keep YouTubing. Just going from there because fuck people. Not everybody, just most people. But yeah, that's what's going on with me so far. And the thing I'd say the the, uh, the straw that broke the camel's back, as it were, was when I came in uh, yesterday. Because I here's here's how the story started. I believe that the bullying has gone so far is because when we go to work every break, there's a worker that uh, not a worker but a a person that comes over. I guess they have some some type of deal with the business, and they come over and they cook lunches and all that stuff for people when they uh when they're on break you pay them like five dollars for a whole plate pretty nice uh i wound up eating one of those meals and wound up catching traveler's diarrhea so now i had to go to the store get some pepto bismo get my situate get my stomach situated i had to start eating rice and applesauce and lentils and other things like that in order to try to keep my system in balance and while i'm sitting there dealing with the traveler's diarrhea I've got workers complaining that I'm not working, that I'm doing this, that, and third. So it's just, it just goes so, f and even to even push even further. When I was at the work, because I work in a cooler, uh, I have a wisdom tooth that broke in half in the process of me working there while I was eating food. Uh, while I took off and took off, not took off work, but I went over to the uh, my work locker and I went to go take some Tylenol and this Traumadol that I was prescribed, this clindamycin and Traumadol that I was prescribed so I can keep my pains in check and keep this infection from going any worse. I'll show it to you. If you can see it. 
But uh, while I went over to my locker to go grab my trauma doll and clindamycin, workers complained then. Oh, he's not working. He's taking breaks whenever he wants. All it did was stop for 10 minutes to take my freaking uh, prescribed medicines from a doctor. And I moved on to work. I went from there. I even had some situation where I would take off a break after four, because we're supposed to take a break every four hours. I take my break every four hours, and they started getting to the point where they start complaining that I was taking my break the wrong times. And they told me, well, you need to wait until they tell you could take a break, and then you can go on a break. So I did that. And I worked a whole eight hours without anybody telling me to take a break. And I went up to the person at the uh, main office. I was like, look, I've been working here for straight eight hours. And no one has told me to go on break. So I'm just going to take it upon myself to take a break. And she was like, oh, oh, well, uh, well I'm sorry. Somebody's supposed to tell you. I was like, well, if they're not going to tell me, I'm just going to put it on my clock, put it on my watch. Then when four hours have passed, maybe even four hours and 30 minutes have passed, I'm going to take my break. Because no one's telling me, no one's acting like they want to talk to me. So I'm going to take it upon myself. But the thing, just to revert back to the original story, what's up? Anyways, to revert back to the, the whole point of that story was, the thing that broke the camel's back, as it were, is I was at work yesterday, and while I was at, while I, I went over, because I was dealing with a traveler's diarrhea, I went to, uh, I went to, on, took all the stuff we're supposed to take off because I'm in the food service industry and sanitation. I took all the stuff off, went to the bathroom. I was in the bathroom for 20 minutes having diarrhea. Uh, and when everything was done, everything was situated because it was so bad that I was about to just shit my pants while I was at work. I was like, no, I'm not going to do that because it's not necessary. I'd rather keep myself in health. I'm not going to sacrifice myself for these people. So I went into the bathroom. 20 minutes later, I come out of the bathroom and I had some Pepto-Bismol in my locker. So I started walking over to my locker and one of the supervisors was standing in front of my locker. I was like, uh, can you move real quick? He was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm just trying to get to my locker real quick. She was like, well, well you're, you're supposed to, uh, you're supposed to do this and that and third and blah, blah, I was like, what are you talking about? I'm just trying to get to my locker real quick. And, uh, a whole bunch of rigmarole between me and her. For about, my, for about 30 seconds and I'm just like can you excuse me so I go to my locker my locker is unlocked and my stuff had been gone through so I'm under the impression not to be paranoid that because I've been feeling a lot of vibes that they've been trying to get me to quit because they're not firing me I've taken three dollars three days off of work and they've not fired me yet so I'm thinking that they're trying to do their best to quiet fire me and they're sabotaging me in order to make sure that either I don't come in or I quit and I refuse to quit so I'm just taking another day off here it is Wednesday because I told myself I'm gonna give it two days and see what happens and lo and behold on the fucking second damn day I found my supervisor looking in my fucking locker and I don't know if they're trying to plant shit on me or not but that's my point is if that's gonna, if that's how it's gonna be they're gonna have to fire me so I can get an unemployment I, I refuse, because that's the kind of bullshit they're pulling. Nah, I'm good. I'm all types of good. While I'm sitting there worried about my baby coming up missing one day, I'm good. I'm good on all that shit. They can miss me with that bullshit. But anyways, I'm about to take my ass up to the... Are you done resting? So it's about like 10 minutes we sit here resting. We're going to walk... Well, that's about 14 minutes now that I check. So we're going to walk our ass up to this McDonald's. And I'm going to go do some internet related shit so I don't burn out my mobile data. Obviously use a VPN. <laughs> we're going to go from there. Because uh, I've never had my PTSD go off more <laughs> than when I was at this job. Look at me wrong, I've had other jobs where my PTSD went off. But it's always because I'm a good worker. And it's like they're trying to fucking get rid of me. Not trying. Well, they are trying because they're not getting rid of me. But at the same time, I refuse to be in this toxic environment because I know one thing, you are what you eat. With me being such an empathic and spiritual person, I could be around certain people I'm eating their energy. 
can't help it. I can block it off, but... Oh man, there's only so long you can hold up a shield. <laughs> so we're going from there. Once I get to the top of this hill, I'll be able to go to my next stage. Go inside them, this, this McDonald's get ship situated. Go from there. I've saved up a pretty good amount of money working that job. I've worked there for a month and a half going on. If they don't fire me, they don't fire me. But if they do, they do. I'm leaving it to fate. <laughs> because it's not worth sacrificing my baby. It's not worth sacrificing my peace of mind or my mental stability. My mental stability is my own. But this is my peace of mind. It's it's like that old story you hear about um any millennials that will know what I'm talking about. When it comes down to anger, we're talking about the chakras and all that shit. And there's spiraling pools of energy within your body. And sometimes guck gets inside those streams and it keeps it the river from flowing properly. That's what I'm going dealing with at this job. It's constant fucking guck. Constant muck and leaves. And either it's just natural and that shit's just happening. Or that shit's happening intentionally like someone's littering on it. And I've come to the understanding... The people are intentionally littering in my fucking river in order to block my flow. So, I think it's wise to just step away and let my path unfold the way it's supposed to instead of trying to force a path that I want life to give me. Maybe this job isn't for me. Maybe this isn't the path that's been laid out for me. Maybe I was only supposed to work there long enough to save up what I need for this vehicle. Maybe I'm trying to push something past its predetermined date. Not necessarily because I believe in predetermination, but hey, everything happens for a reason. <laughs> Even the things you don't want to happen. All right. Sure, I am walking a mile every day just to go to the store, get what I need, use internet, keep myself situated. As I said, I've never been a lazy person. I'm hardworking. I'm determined. I'm so not necessarily the most focused person in the world, but I do have passion and drive. And that's always helped me forge a path forward. And I use the word forge to represent the fact that I will heat a metal to the point where it can be malleable. That's just who I am. My baby's the same way. So, onward and upwards. Freaking North Carolina. It just went from <laughs> raining. <laughs> And then the sun came out while it was raining, and now it switched from rainy to sunny. So now it's humid as hell because all that water that just fell is just making it humid as hell. We'll be all right, though. You ready, Mrs. Lulu? Mr. Lou, wait. Uh, oh, go. Go. Oh, Mrs. Baby. Hi, Mrs. Baby. Whew. Well, I guess that's all I got to say.